Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. This is the Big D again. And as I mentioned, this is going to be a new ranking list. And this is going to be 10 of my favorite underrated horror movies. Why I say these are underrated is because I feel like these movies don't get as much love or respect or what have you. Or, well, movies people just don't talk about anymore. Movies that may have bombed at the box office or... Movies that were pretty big, but just don't get talked about much anymore. So here we go. Number 10, The Bottom of the Chain. You're probably gonna hate me for having this on here. Leprechaun from 1993. Starring Warwick Davis as this evil leprechaun who's trying to get his gold back. And... Believe me, some of this is pretty silly, It's, but I do enjoy it for certain reasons. It has Jennifer Aniston in her first ever film role, just before she even got on TV's Friends the following year. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. It also has the guy who played Francis in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, who actually returned for the brand new movie that just came out. Leprechaun Returns. I think that was a little bit better than any of the others, but still, it was fun, too. <laughs> now, I do like some of the Leprechaun sequels, but not all of them. Two is okay. Three, I think, was good. But four, which is in space, Leprechaun in the Hood, and Back to the Hood suck big time. I regret seeing those, but the only one I haven't seen is Leprechaun Origins. Which, I know that really got this big time, but Leprechaun's still fun, though. Next up, number nine, is An American Werewolf in Paris from 1998. And to believe, yeah, that's right. And I gotta say, I love this movie. I've watched this numerous times. While I do like An American Werewolf in London, but... Well, I like this just as much. Yes. The cast I'm going to say is good. I like the music in this. We do get to see the gal who played the... Oh, crap. What's her name? Oh, I, keep, oh, I keep forgetting these names sometimes. Uh, the gal who played... Happy Gilmore's gal pal, the reporter, or something. Oh, it's so hard to remember all these names. Yeah, yeah. And we get to hear all kinds of cool music and stuff. But I don't really have much to say, but I do like the, how uh, our, the guy who becomes a werewolf after being been man just to kill the one who turns into a werewolf he thought it was oh well i can't give any spoilers forgive me y'all but it's underrated though in my opinion i still think y'all should check it out though mm -hmm. it might not be as good as american werewolf in london but overall i think it's fun next at number eight is now this is easily an underrated movie and that is chopping mall from 1986 now, I've seen this a few times on the net, and I gotta say, this is easily a cult classic in my book. It's got a very good cast. I do know there's some familiar names in this, including Dick Miller, who played Mr. Fireman in Gremlins in its sequel. And he was also in the original Piranha. And let's see, Garrett Graham who played Mr. Simpson in Child's Play 2 a few years later. Yeah, it's about these, well, people who work in the shopping mall, they say it's stay after, after hours, once it's closed up, and they have these robots being the new protectors, the security, and what have you, until a lightning storm occurs, and if really knocks up their power 
and their memories, causing them to go bad and causing some real serious deaths. Especially to um, one, this, this blonde chick and boy, one, it fires this lightning bolt and I have, POW! Head blows off like a paper bag. Oh man, a true classic though in my book. <laughs> I think you should check it out. It's right funny in some parts, but good though. Next at number seven is Devil in the Flesh from 1997. Now, this stars Rose McGowan, you know, who appeared in the original Scream the previous year, as well as she'd also take over as the other third sister to Holly Marie Combs and Alyssa Milano on TV's Charmed. I'm talking the original, that is. <laughs> anyway, she plays this. Well, troubled girl named Debbie, whose parents have died, and she moves in with her grandma, and she just can't get used to what she wears because of the old clothes her grandma gives her, and she soon wants to try and fit in. And soon develops a crutch on her teacher, and she really does, but, well, it goes out of control, and she really does some serious killing. Well, it's more kind of a suspense thriller, but... Now, well, it's kind of like going to be an honorable, like an honorable mention I will give before I do number one, okay? But I'd recommend you possibly should check it out. I think you should check out the sequel, too, with Joey Lyle Keefe. It's, it's good. It's not quite as good as its predecessor, but good, though. Number six is Valentine from 2001. Now, I used to have that on video, but unfortunately... My late great bro will never bribe back to me, and same with Queen of the Damned. I kind of miss those movies. Well, I kind of miss Valentine more than Queen of the Damned. It was good, but Valentine I thought was good, but it's so underrated. <laughs> with a good cast like Marley Shelton, Denise Richards, who I totally love ever since seeing her in Starship Troopers and of course, Wild Things. Love that movie. That was killer. And let's see, David Bournes from B the first few seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and completely of its mouth, Angel. And let's see. Oh, I forget his name. The guy who would later play Veronica Mars' dad is in this. Yes. I think this is pretty cool. Oh, Katherine Heigl's in. You may remember from Bride of Chucky. And also of Roswell. But this has its moments. It's ups and downs. I feel it's got more ups and downs, though. Killings are pretty good. Not too bad. I think you should check it out. Anyway. Number five, this is, might be an odd choice, but I feel it's underrated, though, in my book. And that's Terror Train from 1980. Well, it was produced in 1979, though, since it was from Canada. It started Jamie Lee Curtis after doing Halloween, and then since she would later do a nerve film in Canada, and that being the original prom night. Now, I've seen Terror Train of, mm, three or four times. I gotta say it's pretty cool. I mean, it's about this group who pulls a prank on this one guy. It goes totally wrong. They think he's dead, and now he's well taking over the one of the people who's supposed to be on this train home to for New Year's Day. Yeah, pretty good though. We also have David Copperfield in it. Very good. To see someone famous in that. <laughs> Terror Train's pretty good. And I'd say check it out. It was directed by Roger Spoilswood. I know he directed Stop or My Mom Will Shoot with Sylvester Stallone and The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger plus a lot of others. Pretty cool though. Next at number four is a movie I recently talked about in my. Scary movie collection, which was kind of small, but okay. It and that would be The Car from 1977, starring James Brolin from the Amityville Horror, as well as Kim Richards, who appeared in both 
Escape to Witch Mountain and Return from Witch Mountain, both good movies, and her sister Kyle, who, of course, after this appeared in the original Halloween, R.G. Armstrong from Children of the Corn and Predator, many others. It's very underrated. Got this, though, by critics and what have you, but I still think this movie deserves a little love. If you've never seen it, I think you should check it out. Though it's rated PG, I think you should still check it out. It's considered to be Jaws on Wheels since it's from the same studio that did Jaws. But I don't want to mention a studio's name so I don't get into any trouble or what have you. Thank you very much. I better get this movie or else I'm going to be... I don't know. Number three is... Sugar Hill from 1974. Now this, I say, you probably never heard of. This is another PG-rated horror movie. And this stars Marky Bay as the title character. Her real name's Diana, but her friends call... And, well, her friends and fiancé call her Sugar. But apparently, her fiancé soon gets beaten down by these goons who work for a mob boss after he refuses to sell... This mob boss, his nightclub, and now Sugar wants revenge. The movie starts also has Zara Cully, who played Mother Jefferson for the first few years on The Jeffersons, and Don Pedro Cully, who played Sheriff Lil of Chickasaw County on The Dukes of Hazard, as Baron Samdi, this guy who helps Sugar with the aid of his army of zombies. Uh, really cool. This was one of those few black exploitation flicks in the 70s, much like Shaft. If you've, I'm sure you've heard of Shaft. Sure, I'm sure everybody's heard of it. But anyway, it's pretty cool and all, and it also has a great song you hear at the beginning and ending, done by a group called The Originals is called Supernatural Voodoo Woman. Very good song. I do love Sugar Hill. I've watched it a few times. But I think you'll like it. Now to make this even more quicker. Number two is Idle Hands from 1999. Starring Devin Sawa, who was in Wild America and Final Destination. Which I think I'll do a ranking list for that someday. I don't know when, but I will. Um, with Seth Green from the Austin Powers movies, and Eldon Henson, you may know who that guy, he, I know he was in She's All Dead a year before that, but I also know he played Fulton Reed in the Mighty Ducks movies. About this slacker dude whose hand gets possessed by the devil, and he really goes on a killing spree. But soon get chops his hand off. Jessica Alba's in this. Man, what a fox she is. She's just so cute in this. I loved her performance. Vivica A. Fox is in this as well. And heck, there's even Playboy Claymate Kelly Monaco's in it. That was a surprise. I didn't even know it was her. <laughs> okay, finally, number one. Oh, whoops, forgot. My honorable mention, The Crush from 1993. That was the film that introduced us to Alicia Silverstone before Clueless. And, of course, she appeared in some of the vids from, I think, three songs from Aerosmith's album Get a Grip. And she plays this gal as a crush on the guy who moves into her family's guest house. I'll, I'll talk about that another time. Number one is Blackula from 1972. This stars William Marshall. You may mostly know him as the second version of the King of Cartoons from Pee Wee's Playhouse years later. He's a plays an African prince named Mama Waldy who apparently gets tortured by Dracula after he refuses to help him suppress the slave trade. But he soon re-emerges in the present day, killing lots of people. And going after this gal, Tina, who he believes to be a reincarnation of his former love, Luva. You definitely should watch this. The music's pretty cool, too. Well, I better get going. This is the Big D sign up. Until next time, comment, subscribe, like this, too. See ya!